Yo, it's your boy, Big Antonino, coming at you with a new video. Today, we're going to be going over five things not to do as a beginner player. I know lots of people are barely getting into BDO and just kind of need a direction to go off of. These are my five top rules that I would recommend any new player to stick to until they know what they're doing. Let's jump into it. Okay, so let's just jump into the first one. The number one thing that you do not want to do as a new player is obviously throw away some very important items. But in the beginning of the game, Black Desert likes to throw you a lot of items and it just fills up your inventory space. So I'm going to tell you exactly what things to look out for so you do not throw away. And these are usually just upgrading materials that you're going to need regardless of what stage you're at in the game. So, I'm going to tell you guys not to sell Kaffir Stones, Memory Fragments, Crown Stones, Black Stones, any of the other concentrated stones. Just keep them. Just keep them until you know what to do with them. It is very overwhelming the amount of items that BDO gives you. So, those are the items. I'll also post a picture up showing you how they look like in your inventory so you guys don't make the mistake of selling them. And then by the time you need them, they're not there no more. So, I recommend all new players not to throw away these items. Make sure you look out for these items and just hoard them away. Just hoard them away. Now, let's jump into the next one. So we got that one out of the way. So now let's move on to the next one. Do not ignore the main story quest line. The main story quest line is by far the most important thing you can possibly do in the game. The main story quest line gives you items, gear score, and just overall it opens up the game for you to actually get your mythical armors. It also opens up to you to use the Magnus so you can teleport from place to place. And it also gives you a free pen boss gear armor that you can pick anything from. Also, your journals, whenever you hit escape and then you go to journals, adventure logs, do not ignore these. These give you a lot of stats to your character. They might be a pain to do, but make sure you just do all of them. Do not do them, try, do not do them all at once because it might burn you out because it is a lot of stuff for these adventure logs but everyone in the game who wants to be very geared very highly geared does not ignore these journals it's free gear score it is super easy sometimes it is a lot of money like the what is it the one that gives you a lot of bartalis like this one gives you just a lot of stuff man so yeah do not ignore this do not ignore bartalis any of the adventure logs. If there's an adventure log, best believe that I'm going to be trying to do it within the first month. Just so I can keep up to date. But once you're behind on these books, it becomes over becomes very overwhelming. So do not sleep on these books. Do not ignore the main story quest line. Do not ignore your adventure logs. Do them as you see it necessary. Because these things will hold you back from grinding higher end zones. And actually just progressing your gear all in general. I know it kind of sucks, but you know what? That's the way how it is. We're playing an MMO. You got to do the main story quest line and just keep up with it. It becomes a lot less daunting once you're already caught up. And whenever a new book comes out, you immediately do it. Don't let these books stack up. They will eat you alive if you do not do them. Now moving on to tip number three. Do not ignore and do not wait on grinding for the infinite potion. Your infinite potion, honestly, is by far one of the best things you could possibly do to grind for when you're at lower level and lower gear score. There is an infinite health potion and an infinite mana potion. So, it depends on whatever class you play if you need the mana potion. As a Zerker, I don't need the mana potion as much as other classes. So I think everyone just needs to just grind at least the HP potion. And then if you want to be a real gamer, and have both of them then you go for the mana potion so let me show you guys exactly where you need to go to farm for these potions i'm not going to go too too into depth for for video link sake but you need to go to blood wolves for the infinite potion you want this purple thing right here once you're done with that place getting that purple thing you're going to go to sherry con necropolis i think it's over here you go to sherry con necropolis you get the panacea for the HP potion 
And then, after that, you would want to go to Forest Rotom Rose over here to get the... to get this item right here. And then, boom, you just made yourself an HP potion. If you notice that all of these zones, they're pretty low gear score. I ended up making the HP potion when I was like close to 700 gear score and it did not feel right. And I was losing a lot of money per hour. But if you're lower gear score, these places are actually worth it for you to farm. So now, for the mana potion, you would go to Manchuan's and basically grind up the pieces right here on Manchuan's. You would go to uh, Narvan Step and do a bunch of gathering to get this piece right here. And then once you're done with that, you would most likely go to T-Shirt Ruins or T-Shra, whatever you guys call it, and get the piece right here. Uh, where is it at? It's, it's one of these. I haven't gone. I, I'm not too familiar with the mana potion, but as if I was lower gear score starting out the game, I would instantly, if I had the gear to grind by myself, I would instantly go to any of these three areas and try my luck at getting the full infinite potion. And if you're feeling, if you're geared enough, and you just kind of just want to get a grab bag of all of them, you go to Miramak Ruins because it drops another piece that basically could get turned into any of the other pity drops to make it into a big drop so you go here and you want to look for this element so basically it's all the way in dragon and camasylvia is the spots that you're going to be grinding at most likely as a newer player so you can get the infinite potions out of the way but whatever you do do not sleep on the mana potions because once you start farming i mean hp potions specifically once you start farming elvia elvia anything elvia wise higher gear zones you're gonna be going through hp potions like no one's business and hp potions weigh a lot so in order for you to reduce the weight and carry more trash loot on you it is better just to get rid of that and just only replace it with a singular infinite potion so i recommend all the new players do not ignore going for the infinite potions whenever you're farming and just vibing out playing the game enjoying it so yeah Okay, so tip number four. We're doing very good. So, I'm going to show you guys the two most important bosses to do as a beginner. And the two most important bosses to do as a beginner is Bell and Garmoth. Do not ignore these bosses. These bosses spawn a couple of times a week. And they have the most strongest things in the game. So for Bell, you end up getting basically a Bell's Heart. This is the upgraded version of it, and it's just a lot of gear score. It is 7 gear score on the heart itself. Excluding the hidden stats that are on it whenever you activate this Vel's Heart, which is, it gives you a lot of gear score and a lot of just stats, raw stats. And then Garmoth drops you a, a heart that basically turns your Awakening Weapon or your Offhand into a Fiery Prefix. And the Fiery Prefix gives you more crystal slots depending on which one you put it on so if you put it on your your dandelion it gives you more crystal slots and it also gives you extra effects and then the same thing over here with kudum you just get extra effects so Garmoth's heart is very very important when you want to have a good crystal build and obviously just having more survivability because the offhand fiery prefix gives you a lot more stats so don't sleep on Garmoth and Bells. I will show you guys on the map where Garmoth and Bell are. So Bell is a sea monster that goes all the way... It's in the sea. In the sea. Right here. This is where you fight Bell. In the ocean. You're gonna need to join a guild for this. Most guilds do Bell rides. So if you're in your guild and you don't know what to do, just look for guildies going to Bell and then just jump on their boat. You don't necessarily need to hit the boss or whatever. Just join your guildies and just be in the party with them and you will get the drop. Now for Garmoth, Garmoth all the way bound by Dravencroon. And it is right here, it's literally called Garmoth's Nest. This big dragon spawns in right here. And basically you can do this boss three times a week and it will drop you a Garmoth's heart if you're lucky enough. So now you're just like, okay, well when do these roll bosses spawn? Well there's a Discord for that. There is a Discord for that. I'll I'll post it in the links, but it's called BDO NA Bosses, if you guys are playing on NA, and so on and so forth. So the BDO NA Bosses, you go here, or whichever Discord you find on Google, 
and then you click on timers and it tells you exactly when the next boss is going to spawn. Right here we're looking for Garmoth. Garmoth spawns in 20 hours. Cool. And then Vel spawns in 22 hours. So these two bosses, Vel and Garmoth, are really important for you to get to. So with that you guys, like, do not ignore these bosses. It's a lot of gear score and a lot of crystal slots you're leaving up on the uh, on the table. And it's easier to get them early because you have all the free time in the world instead of like having to be committed to, you know, node wars and all that other stuff. You guys are still gearing up. Do the best because these items easily go for like 10 billion on the marketplace. There's no way you're gonna make 10 billion on the marketplace. I mean, 10 billion casually, unless you're farming centaurs. So, be be diligent and just go to these bosses whenever you guys can. Okay, so for the last tip, tip number five is honestly just join a guild. Join a guild, man. Hit the G, hit the G button on your character right now and just join a guild, man. Don't play the game alone. You're not gonna learn anything about this MMO if you play the game alone. Join a guild. Join a guild. Look at roll chat. You can see everyone recruiting for guilds right now if you just go through world chat. There's a lot of stuff happening. Join a guild. The benefits of joining a guild is number one, you have a community that will help you out in case you have any questions. Number two, you get all of these buffs whenever you join a guild. You get all five AP plus five, accuracy rate plus five percent, and the effects just keep on going on and on and on. And honestly, it's an MMO. Do you want to be a social player in MMOs so you can get far? As a new player, do not sleep on guilds because you get so many benefits. You even get login rewards for being in a guild. Look at this. this. These are the guild login rewards that you get whenever you're in a guild. So not only does it give you extra stats, it gives you more survivability, it gives you community, and it also gives you extra login rewards. And you know what? Also, there's certain types of guilds that do give guild pay that is kind of a good amount, especially if you're doing siege. You'll get paid at least a billion a week if you do siege on in certain guilds. So do not sleep. Join a guild. It is the best thing. That is the number one tip I will give to new players is join a guild. Because if your guild is active and they know what they're doing, they're already going to tell you all this stuff in the first place that I'm telling you right now. But this is meant for people who do not know. So don't play the game alone. Join a guild. And just be active in the community. Welcome to BDO. Have a good one, you guys. And if you guys want to see more of my content, please feel free to subscribe. I do stream Mondays through Fridays on Twitch around 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if you guys want to, you know, drop a follow, we're really close to the follower goal. But yeah, hopefully this video helps out all you new players. I am very excited to have you join the community of BDO. And with that, I'll see you in the next video.